Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins and I'm a Linode developer advocate. What we're gonna be doing in this video is talking about Little Link Custom. What this is is a free and open source alternative to something like Linktree, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a service that allows you to create a web page with various links to your personal website, various social media instances. It's basically a collection of you and the places that you're at. Services like this are really good for putting in things like your bio on Twitter, Instagram, or any other social media website, as in many cases, they only allow for one link. And with a service like this, this one link can turn into multiple so people can find you in the specific platform that they prefer to use. And Little Link Custom is pretty cool because again, it's free, self-hosted, there's a bunch of themes, and you can easily link it to your own domain name. And in this video, we're gonna be setting it up here on Linode using Docker. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on in. So Julian here is the author of Little Link Custom. You can see here all of his repositories. We have the main repo here. We have the Docker instance here. We'll come back to this. If we go ahead and open up the main repository, here you can get a lot of the information about the actual application. And just to see what it looks like, if I go ahead and click on live demo here, this is going to be the demo and this is kind of what it looks like and it's completely customizable. We have our title, our main logo, we have a little description, and then of course links to various websites and services. And if I go back here real quick, you can see some of the feature comparisons versus Little Link and Little Link Admin, which this is a fork of. If we scroll down here, you get some more information on how the animations work, various themes and all that, but we're gonna dive more into that in just a little bit. What we're gonna do is set up an environment to run our very own instance of Little Link. And with that, I'm gonna be using a domain name that I set up in the Linode Domain Name Manager. I'm not gonna go over that, there'll be a link down below. But once you do have a domain name properly set up in here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab an API token, create our personal access token. I'm just gonna call it Little Link for now and create that token. Here's my token. Make sure nobody sees this. I'm gonna go ahead and revoke this before this video goes up, but we're gonna give that a copy and say I have it saved. And from there, we're gonna create a new Linode. Now, if you already have a Linode set up, this is a pretty light service, so you can run it as just a separate Docker container with other instances, but this is the process to go ahead and set this up from scratch. So from here, limited pseudo user, I'm gonna go with Brandon. I'm just gonna let this kind of autofill in some stuff. Of course, I do recommend SSH public keys for a little more security for the sake of time. We're gonna skip that for now. Paste in our API token, and I'm gonna be doing this on the link subdomain. So if I type in link for my domain, this is gonna be hopkey.net. Put in your email address. And for now, I'm gonna say no to both of these. Little Link does have an option to send confirmation emails. They do have their very own built-in email server. Now for these, I'm gonna say yes, as just in case if I were to want to allow people to register, this Linode is gonna send out confirmation emails. And for image, I'm just gonna go with the last LTS version of Ubuntu region, select a region that is close to you. And this is a pretty light instance, so the Nanode $5 a month plan will be fine. And like always, if you go ahead and add more instances and you need to upgrade, you could always do so very easily. Root password, again, I'm gonna let it autofill and, and get rid of this tag here. Label, you could call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it docker slash little link. There we go. And then let's fire her up. Of course, you could set up backups of VLANs and all that. And there's a good spot here to add your SSH keys, but let's skip all that for now and go create Linode because we just want to get this guy spun up. And of course, the Linode dashboard here is really nice. A lot of information and features, configuration changes and more. But one of my favorite things right here, launching the Lish console. This will allow us to see what our server is doing on the back end without actually having to SSH into it. So we're able to see boot sequences, installations and things like that. You can see with that Docker one-click installer, it's going ahead and grabbing a lot of things that we're gonna need and various dependencies. And within this console, when we see a prompt to log in, that's when we know our server is ready to go. So I could close this out. And for here under SSH access, we could just go ahead and copy this. And then from there, we could go ahead and open up a terminal client and paste that on in. Now we were able to create our limited pseudo user, so I'm gonna switch out root for my username and hit enter. This is our server, so we're gonna say yes, and then type in that password we created in the Linode one-click installer. And then once we're in, like always, the very first thing we wanna do is just run a quick update and upgrade. Make sure all of our repositories are good and we have the latest software on our server. sudo apt upgrade, and we're just gonna say Y to default to that. Type in our password once again and hit enter. Now this may take it a little bit, so we'll be right back. And there we go, our update is now complete. 
And we really don't need to grab anything else because we already have Docker, Docker Compose, and any other prerequisites installed. So let's go ahead and open up my favorite text editor, Nano, and we're going to create a docker-compose.yaml file. So YML, enter, and here we go. So let's go jump back to our web browser real quick. And this right here is the uh, Docker GitHub repository. And they do have some documentation and installation stuff here. But I will note their example config for Docker Compose has a lot of uh, typos, a lot of things that you're not really going to be needing. And just if you copy and paste this into Docker Compose, it's not going to work. And up here they do have a custom deployment for command prompt, things like that. If you're experienced with Docker, you can kind of follow through this and make your own custom edits to make all this work. For me, I have a pretty basic configuration here. This is what I have, so I'm going to give this a uh, copy and then paste it on over here. So we have services, little link custom. We have our host name, which this isn't really necessary either. Image is going to be the little link custom latest image environment. We have our time zone here under server admin. You're going to want to put in your server admin email address here under HTTP server name. In this case, I'm going to be using and link log level info PHP memory limit is 256 with a max upload size of eight megabytes. And for me, I'm doing this on the port 80 and the port 443, this for HTTP and this for HTTPS. Now I'm not going to be setting up a full reverse proxy and installing a certificate in this video, but there's tons of resources on how to do that with Nginx. And if we head back over to our web browser and scroll down a bit, we could go to their documentation and under getting started you'll see some information on setting up nginx as a proxy this is their kind of sample configuration here and at the very bottom of this uh, github page under reverse proxy under nginx you'll have some more information here adding the 443 port using a uh, ip address here and of course if we jump back to our terminal if you have other containers or whatever on these ports you could change the first port for example you can make this one 8000 and this one something else and then have a reverse proxy point to that port when setting up a domain but for now this is going to be good for us let's control o output that control x and then we can go ahead and spin it up so to do that we're going to do sudo docker dash compose we're going to do up dash d for detached so we're not in a terminal instance we're stuck in and since that's the only docker compose file that should work perfectly fine so let's hit enter and there we go so it's going to go ahead and pull the packages it needs do note that this is around two to three hundred megabytes so depending on how small your server is or whatever you're doing this on that may be something to keep note of so there we go it is all up and running so now we can just go ahead and check that by going to either our IP address, so just an example, if I copy that in, if you didn't set up a domain name, this should work completely fine. You could see our setup wizard there. Or additionally, I have the IP address link.hopkey.net. Hit enter and it should take us to the exact same place. And this is gonna just be a basic setup. So we're gonna go next. It's gonna run a check. We have all checks, so we are good when it comes to all the dependencies. So the Docker container setup was correct and valid. Database type, if you do have a preference, you can pick it here. I'm gonna go SQLite. And then here, add an email. I'm just gonna go with my email. I'm gonna change this password. And then you're gonna to wanna to give yourself a handle. For me, I'm gonna go Tech Hut, and I'm gonna call this just my name. Now the handle is primarily for multiple accounts on a single instance. I'm gonna talk about that in just a sec. Right here, enable registration. So you can and set it up so people can register, create their own little pages and accounts using your domain. Really cool if you want that. If you're setting this up just for you and you're just trying to find an alternative for yourself, you could say no to that and then you'd say no to email verification as well. And then set your homepage, you would say yes to this. So then link dot whatever your domain is would take you directly to your specific page. Just to keep this simple, I'm just gonna keep everything as default, including the app name here. You could call it whatever you would like. Actually, just for sake of example, I'm gonna change the uh, app name to Tech Hut Link. And then from there, we could go ahead and finish the setup. Now do note, we may get a uh, 404 error page here. This isn't the most perfect application around, but if we go ahead and get rid of options here, hit enter. It's going to take us to little link custom. From here, we could go ahead and log into our instance. So our email address, password, 
and click on login. So now here we are logged into our little link dashboard. You can see here under user status, I have zero links, zero clicks, and one total user. You can see link.hopkey.net at tech hut, and there's really not much going on because I haven't really done much. So let's close this out here, and I just wanna show you an example of adding a page item. So I'm gonna click on this, and here for page items, you have a couple different blocks we could pick from. We have a predefined site, custom links, headings, spacers, and text. Predefined sites are the ones that have like custom images, colors, things like that. Custom links do not. And then of course we have heading space or text. And just as an example, we're gonna do predefined site. We are going to do this as a YouTube link. Custom title, I'm gonna leave that blank because YouTube will be fine. URL, I'm gonna go ahead and paste my URL in there. Click on save, and there we go. So now we have YouTube, and if I scroll down, we can kind of see a preview here of what that's gonna look like. Really nice animations. If you scroll down a little more, we're gonna have page icons. So we could add those if we would like to. And you can see there's a lot of popular services, good old Mastodon here on top, followed by just about everything else. Now, as an example, I'm gonna add a Twitter one. And then just cause I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my Afostodon one. Scroll down here and let's save our links. So you can see now I have some of the links there. So just depending on what you're going for, you could use both. You can mix and match, use only the uh, items here, which gives you this. It's really all up to you. And of course, let's add a new item. And then under blocks, just to show you something else, we can do a heading. And I'm just gonna call this something like media. And there we go. So you see media under the YouTube. I would just want to go ahead and drag this above. And then you could go ahead and use headers to categorize via various links and whatnot. So just real quick here, I'm gonna add a couple more things just so we have a more uh, completed look. So there we go, I went ahead and added a little more content. You can see the preview here. And I organized all the blocks. I clicked on some things as you can see there. The blocks I did add, I have a custom link here for a Linode $100 credit. Make sure you go ahead and check out that link down below. I have a custom text box entry. We have a spacer here as well as those links, and then of course some headings. And what that looks like is over here. Also, I removed those smaller icons. I just didn't really like how they looked. But you can see these are all the websites and services where you can find us. Also, don't forget, if you want to set up for yourself, you can get this with a $100 60 credit from Linode. Button's right there. And that button was actually customized, as if we go over here and then click on customize, which in here, the actual button editor is very nice. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see our Linode $100 credit color text we're gonna go ahead and keep this as white and then the background let's go with a uh, a nice linode green you can see how detailed you can get with the actual gradient so we'll go darker there we'll go kind of a, a darker on the ends and then have it lighten up in the middle a bit so maybe about there and there that looks pretty good maybe lighten up this corner just a bit awesome so there we go we just hit submit and then this is the final product under here we have our headings so this is our media we have youtube and odyssey and then under connect, of course, you have Macedon, Twitter, and Discord. Now, additionally, you can edit what shows up with these buttons, and you could get rid of this if you want to, which I'll show you real quick in some of the configuration options. But first, let's go over to your themes here, which here's where you change that. You can select your themes here. And if we scroll down, we have an updater, and we can download themes from here. So let's go ahead and open this up in a new tab. And Little Link Custom Themes. So here is where you could go through, figure out which ones you prefer, what you like download and upload them they have a minecraft bean soup and a few others now i do like stargazer here and i think it's already installed so if i go over to stargazer and i apply that and here we go here's our preview so we can kind of see what that looks like it looks like it might need some additional customization with that custom link but again i could just go and customize it or change it to match more with one of these if i would like to let's go over here and reload this page and there we go yeah so we have a little bit of work to do with this theme but that's just an example of how easy it is to change it overall it's a, a pretty cool thing so let's go back over here and i'm actually going to switch back to the default Actually, mono is a pretty cool one. Let's go mono, apply that. There we go, that's looking pretty good here. So now if we go to account settings, and here we have basic stuff such as email, password, and role. And then of course we can log out, we could go to your page, which if I click on that, and then it's here where we could change that main logo that we see right here to whatever we would like. We have our page URL display name, and you can add a page description here if you'd like to, instead of what I did, which was adding a, a custom text block. And now we have some of the administrator stuff. So here we have config, manage users, 
footer pages and home page. So just real quick under the configuration. And here we have some tabs. So we have the regular config. So if we scroll down, we'll have options such as enabling and disable registration like we saw during setup, as well as email verification. We can set the home page here to a specific user if we would like to. So I could set mine to tech hut. So instead of having the at tech hut, it will just be the main website and force links with HTTPS. So if you do set up that reverse proxy and get a uh, certificate, you could go ahead and enable that. Application title, and then we have some panel settings. So you can enable or disable a lot of various features. We have security, advanced, with a lot of different options that you go ahead and play with. And then of course you could do a custom SMTP server if you don't trust using their built-in one. And then of course, if we go up, we have the advanced config which just brings up a text editor with the entire configuration for the service, which there's really a lot of different things you could change in here. You have your uh, footer links you can edit, homepage settings, and just a whole lot more. Additionally, you have backups, so you can pull and add backups if you'd like to through here, lots of good stuff. And if we go back to admin, we have the manage user section. So if I give that a click, and you can see here, I only have one user, I have my email, and you can edit various things through here, such as the links and the actual user profile, but of course you can add users here if you don't want to like enable public registration, but you do want to be able to give a couple more people access to using your instance of leak tree custom. And of course you don't have to give people admin role as you can make them users or VIPs. And then from there, of course, we have things such as the home page and footer pages. If I go over to footer pages, and here are the pages like your terms, privacy, and contact. So you could fill all this out with your own custom information or policies. Now we've mentioned a couple different times that the home page here, you could change to a specific profile, but the default, if we go over here, get rid of that and hit enter, is just the uh, little link custom page with a couple of their own links. And of course you go ahead and customize this as well by changing the site logo, favicon, and the home page message, which you can see right here. But yeah, that's basically it when it comes to the overall configuration. This is a fantastic tool, especially if you want to go ahead and ditch other services and self-host it on your very own instance of Linode. And now there you go. You have your very own self-hosted link tree. So you could go ahead, get your link, paste it in your bio of whatever other social media platforms you want, and kind of use this as your online business card. With all that, you are on the Linode YouTube channel and there are a ton of awesome cloud computing videos that I do recommend you check out and you really should subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss the future uploads from a ton of wonderful creators on the platform. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.